Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Hampton. I'm a board certified family and obesity medicine doctor. I have additional training in nutrition and functional medicine. And if you're new to my channel, I appreciate you coming to my channel because I believe that we all can achieve metabolic health. Uh, in today's video, I really want to encourage you to support the channel by clicking on that affiliate link that you'll see in the video notes. And today I want to talk about a new study. I'm actually excited because in order to you know, bring to the masses the benefits of low-carb keto and even carnivore, you got to have research, right? And there's been tons of research done on low-carb and keto by the likes of Dr. Eric Westman and others, but I think we got to keep putting this science in front of people. And the reason why this study is important is because when you read the study, one of the things they highlight, you know, is the prevalence of these di diagnoses like hypertension. 47% of adults in America are hypertensive. 42% are struggling with their weight and are considered obese. And 50%, half of us, are diabetic or have prediabetes. So it's really important that if we can do anything to mitigate that and make that better, we should do it. Uh, many of you have been told by your doctors in the past that you know, keto is dangerous, you know, yet it's the one dietary pattern that I use to reverse the so-called chronic medical conditions I see in my clinical practice. So it's kind of awkward to hear my patients deal with hearing this information from the world that doesn't really line up with what I see in clinical practice. And uh, even the U.S. News and World Report, which should be a trusted resource, uh, they consider keto one of the most dangerous diets, which is, you know, uh, somewhat laughable to be honest when I hear that. But, but they they believe that this dietary pattern can increase your risk of medical conditions. Uh, that because it doesn't include the, the so-called protective foods like these what I call non-essential things like fruit legumes and whole grains, the exact foods that will raise the blood sugar in my diabetic and make it difficult for my hypertensives, believe it or not, to control their blood pressure. So, so, you know, and so you may ask, you know, why is it that the U.S. News and World Report would suggest that this is, this is a dangerous diet? When, so, I, so when I read the, uh, the, the statement they put out, I looked at the resources, and when I looked at the resources, one was uh, source four. Uh, it was actually a scientific uh, statement from the National Lipid Association Task Force, and the source five was a review article. And see, so the problem is when you're looking at scientific statements that are reviews or a review article, this is actually not at the level of evidence that you should be uh, using to make decisions about your health. And certainly as a clinician who has even a higher standard should not be using, we should be using randomized control trials whenever available. So when I see, uh, you know, information put out there that doesn't do that, I'm always cautious. And I know that information only shows possible association, possible correlation, but in many times don't show causation. So but but one of the reasons I really wanted to do this video is because of this this bias, this anti low carb anti keto bias that's out there and and all the others that I respect like Dr. Kim Berry, Dr. Brett Schur and Nicholas Noritz and others have made videos about this study. I think it's a grassroots effort so uh, rather it's me or somebody else we all have to do our part to get this information out to the public because if not us then who. So so let's take a look as we get started with the um, the dash diet. And we're going to contrast that with the keto dietary pattern. As you know, uh, and as you have heard, you know, I use uh, therapeutic nutritional ketosis to help reverse these so-called chronic medical conditions. And, you know, so whenever I hear about research that's out there that's talking about keto, low-carb, carnivore, I'm really interested. Uh, so the DASH diet, when it, when it first came about, was kind of advocated by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute around 1997 or so. And uh, so this dietary uh, study uh, actually was about a three-week study, had about 459 adults who were in it. And at the end of the day, they encouraged them who were in the study to you know, eat low in saturated fat, uh, low in total fat and cholesterol, eat a, eat a, eat a high amount of fruit, vegetables, 
and of course, low fat uh, dairy foods. And of course, they were allowed to eat whole grains, poultry, fish, and nuts, and uh, and just and, and to avoid red meat, avoid fat, avoid sweets, and of course, uh, uh, beverages that were sweetened. And of course, this this approach was high in potassium, which is actually good for your blood pressure, calcium, magnesium. And, and those things are good for your blood pressure. And of course, a lot of fiber, a lot of fiber. But ultimately, it was kind of a low salt, low sodium approach as well, and low fat. And, th- and it was thought that uh, that type of dietary pattern would help reduce hypertension. And they did find that in that study that, that there were benefits of doing that. Now, l- another way of looking at the DASH diet is to you know say exactly what are they asking us to eat from a broader perspective? Of course, as you can see, six to eight servings of grains. And I would argue that if my patients who are diabetic did that, their blood sugars would be sky high. But just just to put that out there, they also would recommend uh, fruits and vegetables. And as you know, non-starchy vegetables, not a problem, but fruit, uh, that could raise your blood sugar as well. Low-fat dairy. And by the way, when you eat low-fat dairy, it tends to be higher in sugar. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, they want to, They want you to have low, low fat, low sweets, lean proteins. All the animals have to be lean, and then of course legumes or nuts and seeds. They want you to get four to five servings. So if you look at this, this is kind of the general message, and it really doesn't sound like a bad diet. But I think as a person who watches what happens to your meter when you eat the grains and the fruit, uh, those types of things. Of course, the sweets. Those things can harm you. So I'm always cautious of that. Now, the dietary pattern that I tend to endorse, which is the uh, keto dietary pattern, uh, tends to be higher in fat, uh, lower in carbs, and of course, moderate in protein. As a general rule, most people in the low-carb community tend to recommend less than 30 grams of total carbs per day. In the study, it was a little bit more of a net carb methodology, which I'll mention in a moment. So I just wanted to put the keto in front of you, put the dash in front of you, so you'll have... Uh, that framing. Now, let's look at the study itself. It was entitled Comparing Very Low Carb Versus a DASH Diet for Overweight or Obese Adults with Hypertension and Prediabetes or Type 2 Diabetes. And the good thing is it was a randomized trial, which is very important, done by Dr. Laura Seslow and her colleagues at Michigan. And it was published in the Annals of Family Medicine. So it included about 94 adults who were in this randomized uh, blind study, 45 did the keto dietary pattern, 49 did the DASH dietary pattern, and uh, of course it lasted for four months. But in this study, uh, they did look at having a keto uh, dietary pattern to be between 20 to 35 carbs per day of net carbs. Uh, Again, most of us in the keto community prefer total carbs, and they also measured urinary ketones while with a DASH diet, they limited sodium to uh, less than 2.3 grams per day and fat intake then to less than 30% of calories versus 70% in an actual keto diet. And of course, uh, that was what they did. They had to educate people, of course. They had to make sure they had their books to understand what these diets were. Uh, they got text messages. They got counseling. So they got all the things that it would take to kind of keep them on message. And the good news is in this study, it was statistically significant. That means that the determinations that were made by an analysis of the data were not explainable by chance alone, meaning that the results they got were things you can trust. It looks like it wasn't random or possible. It was actually cause and effect. So when when you look at the study, and you can see it on table two, uh, you'll notice that for the uh, to the left, you'll see the very low carb diet, which is keto. The blood pressure change was 9.77 in that group. And the change for the DASH diet was 5.18. So in other words, the very low carb or keto group were getting twice the benefit of the keto diet versus the DASH diet for blood pressure improvement. Then you can look at the, the A1C and you can see a 0.35 change uh, versus a 0.14 change uh, with a DASH diet. So you can see two and a half to three times improvement there. And then for weight, it was a 19 pound, 19.4 pound 
uh, weight loss with the very low carb group over that time frame and 10.34 with the dash diet, which is kind of cool to lose 19 pounds in uh, a very short amount of time. I think that's really cool. So, so as you can see from this uh, graph, it, like, literally twice the benefit occurred when people did the keto dietary pattern versus DASH diet. And, and keep in mind, the DASH diet has been the standard for blood pressure, uh, you know, lifestyle uh, improvement for years and years. So it's nice to know that we have a study that shows that we have an alternative option now. Now, I have another graph here from the study, Table 5, Drug Regimen Changes for Participants Taking Drug During a Trial. It's just another way of saying, did they reduce their medicines? And, and if you look at uh, the very low carb to the left, uh, discontinued or decreased was at 31.3%, where uh, for the DASH diet, only 13% reduced or uh, discontinued uh, their medicine. So um, it's nice to see that huge difference there. That's a huge difference. And then when you go down, and that's for blood pressure. Now, when you look at the blood glucose, uh, you'll see from the graph that uh, for it's about 40% uh, discontinued or decreased uh, their meds for those taking diabetes meds. And guess how many for the DASH diet? Uh, zero. But that should be logical to you. Like if you're having an issue with processing carbs for whatever reason, wouldn't it be logical just to reduce the carbs so that you won't ask your body to do what it can't do as opposed to reducing salt and fat? which is what the DASH diet does. So to me, this is logical. I think most people in the low-carb or keto community kind of knew this already. And it's just taking, you know, the somebody taking the time to do the study. So so let's, let's kind of talk a little bit about a couple of the reasons why it's, it's likely that a person is going to do better if they have hypertension, obesity, and diabetes uh, with uh, a keto diet. Let's start with the root cause concept. So as a doctor who understands functional medicine, I'm always interested in the root cause. And and I've learned over my years learn, learning nutrition and how the body works that hyperinsulinemia, making too much insulin, is a better root cause of why we have high blood pressure in the first place. Because if you have too much insulin being made, it's going to actually force your kidneys to uh, retain salt. And then that salt reten retention from the hyperinsulinemia is going to then lead to a higher blood pressure. The question is, why did, it, why did you have hyperinsulinemia in the first place? And, and yeah, you can say it's some genetic factors, but uh, ultimately your diet has a huge impact. So if you consume things like too many carbs, you're likely to have hyperinsulinemia. So that's just something to keep in mind, number one. Number two, uh, the DASH diet focused on limiting sodium. Uh, but if you think about it, so should we limit sodium or salt, or should we not have hyperinsulinemia, which will then lead to salt retention? So so although that can help, clearly, because the diet did help, it's not getting to the root cause. And I think the root cause approach makes way more sense than to avoid the salt. Just avoid the starch that leads to the hyperinsulinemia, that which will then lead to all of the salt being absorbed. And then finally, the DASH diet limits the fat consumption that you consume. But if you think about this hyperinsulinemia concept and you think about uh, which macronutrient of the three has the least impact on your blood sugar and therefore raising your insulin level, it's the fat. So it would make sense that focusing on fat doesn't really make sense because it's the one that has the least impact on hyperinsulinemia. So I think that's really important. Just as importantly, uh, this hyperinsulinemia is just, it's not about diabetes alone. It's not about obesity alone or cardiovascular disease. It's all three that will improve if you avoid eating the things that lead to it. So, so I really think that's important to understand. And I think it's important to think about, well, what do I walk away with having uh, heard this video? The first thing is obvious. Number one, if you have someone you love or you start struggling with your weight, then maybe maybe you should consider uh, uh, keto as a better approach than a DASH diet. Certainly, if you have hypertension, uh, diabetes, or prediabetes, the same is true. So for those in those categories, now you have another option that I think will 
do you, uh, you know, better? So I would consider that. Number two, um, it's really important that we work as a team to spread this information. So, so because it's a grassroots effort, maybe sharing uh, the link that I'll share in the video notes of the study with your doctor, uh, particularly if you're thinking about doing keto and you're like, eh, I don't know how they're going to feel about it. You say, hey, doc, I got this article that says that this may be a better dietary approach for my blood pressure or my diabetes, or I'm trying to lose weight. Now you have an additional resource to help you sell that to your doctor. Number three, you have friends and family. Uh, I gave you the stats earlier from the article that shared that literally half of us are dealing with diabetes and uh, borderline diabetes or hypertension or obesity. So many people we know are. So you may want to share this video so that they'll also be given a path to heal as well. And, and I think what I've learned and what I'm always cautious about is con questioning conventional thinking. I would actually question anything you learn, including what I'm sharing with you. Always, you know, dot your I's, cross your T's, and, and always do additional research to try to try to prove what you're hearing is true before you act on it and make it part of your life. So I really hope this video added value to your life. I'm happy if you hadn't heard about the study that you now know about it and, and just to hear my perspective. And until we get together again, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.